We say RPG all the time to describe a kind of game that 35 years ago or so wouldn't be considered an RPG. They often have swords and sorcery, or barring that, baseball bats and psychokinetic powers. They often focus on epic storylines and battling great evils. Dungeons may be trekked through, dragons may appear. Yet to the pen and paper gamer, there's always been a disconnect and illegitimate use of the term. Theirs is a world of constant adaptation where there's no such thing as programming limitations. So it seems even more strange to take this free-flowing concept of the RPG, using in fact the most venerable name in the industry, and try to fit it into an arcade format where it's not about creative solutions to problems or diplomacy checks, it's about shoveling more quarters into the machine. Dungeons & Dragons Chronicles of Mistara jams Capcom's two attempts at arcadifying the D&D franchise together into one package, just like they did on the Saturn in Japan back in 99. Only now, since it's on the PS3, you can enjoy the full four-player experience, online or locally, with leaderboards and trophies and the rest of the trappings of the modern era. But rest assured, this is still a woefully abusive mid-90s brawler full of enemies with egregious reach advantage, swarms of foes from every side, thus requiring you to recruit your friends who plop their quarters into the machine, and loads of crap to pick up off the ground. Cash? Sure, cash makes sense, especially since you can shop between stages. Weapons? Okay, stuff like daggers and hammers, what can be used as projectiles, that makes sense. Rings of magic missile? Yeah, I guess it really is D&D. At least, setting certain familiar elements. Two separate games, Tower of Doom and Shadow Over Mistara, are compiled here, and while they share plenty of similarities, it's pretty easy to see the improvements the latter made over the former. Tower of Doom offers only four character classes, has more limiting controls, and only shows the sub-weapon you're currently holding. Shadow Over Mistara adds the magic user and thief characters to the standard elf, dwarf, cleric, and warrior, features ten chapters of action to its predecessor seven, and incorporates a secret of mana-esque item ring for managing secondary weapons. This makes it easier to take inventory at a glance, though both games feature a massive array of items that, due to limitations on the display, might get crunched down into unintelligible masses. A ring of cure serious wounds, for example, may display as just CSW on your item ring, leaving you to puzzle over its meaning while being harried by two kobolds and a knoll named Chuck. This is exactly the kind of game I'd never want to come upon in an arcade because it works so much better when the 25 cents of play limit is removed. The branching storyline is actually fairly engaging, and you find yourself really wanting to take down the evil dragon sorceress, regardless of how many trips you make to the change machine that no longer exists. Further, the total collection of items acts as a separate goal, as the title screen for each game chronicles just how many trinkets and baubles you've managed to obtain in each title. And then there are in-game achievements that award vault points, used to unlock the original artwork, alternate game modes, and even the original promo flyer that still has the address of Capcom's arcade headquarters in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Talk about a blast from the past. Just, uh, turn down the audio a bit. Sure, it'll be tougher to hear the lifted directly from Mega Man X soundtrack, but at least you won't have to hear the dwarf constantly herniating various things, or a lich who sounds like a bad LARPer on speed. Thank <laughs> you.